scheduled talk. Well, it was scheduled a week ago, but the guy that arranged his room has disappeared from the grid, and nobody knows where he is, and nobody can contact him. So, I'm still going to do my talk. Um, it's about Polar Zell. Does anybody know Polar Zell? That's here already. Oh, that's that's what. Does anyone actually have used Polar Zell? Part of it. Okay. Well. Um, what I'm going to talk about is about Polar Zell uh, in general, a bit of uh, what it does, what the philosophy behind it is, but also about something specific that happened last year, namely that Polar Zell was integrated into OpenVPN and was accredited for Dutch governmental use for uh, the restricted level of VPN uh, communication. And it was a first in the Netherlands that, and as far as I know, a first for such a mainstream project to actually become government accredited for just regular use within the government. So first, a little bit about me. Um, I have a background in IT, security, cryptography. Um, I did a lot of development for security products for Dutch state, uh, for making uh, conversations between embassies, uh, between uh, 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 Navy ships and what, whatever. Um, I'm an avid software developer. Um, I do some angel investment in a number of small startups in the social scene. And um, I just, this, this was my hobby, Polar Cell. It still is my hobby, it's not my full time job. But I'm trying to uh, at least get it uh, better known because it was my favorite project uh, for the past uh, time. I am, I don't know if this is viewable from the back, but I am realistically paranoid, uh, meaning that I know that you can't get everything right and everything secure. But um, I do think that you actually should do as much as possible to make stuff secure and usable. Because if you make it really secure and not usable, nobody's ever going to uh, do it. So Polar SSL, it's a cryptography and SSL TLS library. Um, so that means that it does all the basic cryptography shit. It does uh, all the standard symmetric algorithms, uh, AES, Camellia, which is the... Uh, more Eastern variant of uh, AES, uh, the, the older versions, DES, Triple DES, XTA, some smaller ones, uh, all the standard hashings, and it does SSL. So that means it does X509, certificate parsing, uh, uh, certificate verification list parsing, verification of the, of the chains, ASN1 parsing, uh, the things you actually don't want to do if you want to make a security application. It started out in 2009, um, I was an avid user of XY SSL, which was my favorite project to use for cryptography and security. But the maintainer of XY SSL stopped. He didn't want to continue anymore. And I asked him if I could continue. And he gave me all the source code um, under the limitation that I had to change the name. So I wanted to have a related name, something that was related with XY SSL, uh, which was a cool name. So I took the uh, coordinate systems, and uh, from the XY I went to Polar, and then we had a cool coordinate system, so we, we were ready to get started. Uh, it's GPL, so it's open source, it's dual licensed, um, because the open source community for these kind of niche markets is not large enough to actually maintain it. So there has to be some cash flow to actually sometimes be able to pay developers or do some development myself instead of doing my regular job. And it works. There are some major companies worldwide using uh, uh, Polar SSL and they pay limited amounts to help software development, which is great. It's really, really small. So it's 17,000 lines of code um, compared to OpenSSL, which is the de facto standard for SSL, which is around 150,000 lines of code. It's 10 times as small. It does. Uh, for the core part, nearly everything that OpenSSL does, but it doesn't have all the gimmicks, the uh, virtualization layers, the generalization layers, the everything that OpenSSL tries to abstract from you and thereby is unusable for most users. Um, it's really small in memory as well. It fits if you compile it right in uh, embedded memory uh, in within 30 ki kilobytes. You can do basic functionality, and if you go up to about 120, 150 kilobytes, you can do a full SSL server with all the functionality you need. Um, same goes for your storage you need. 
Um, well, there's more tests than the, there's actual code. Test code is generated, but there's more tests than there's actually code. From the open source point of view, there's a number of large projects using it. Uh, OpenVPN, I'll dive into later. Uh, Knuke, which was at a presentation yesterday, I believe. Ah, hi. Okay, well, perfect. Not nice to meet you. Um, PowerDNS, I don't know if people know PowerDNS, but it's actually one of the largest DNS services in the world. Uh, it hosted total uh, Dutch uh, namespace, but it uh, it's the, was the first one to actually implement DNSSEC, and for DNSSEC it used Polar SSL, um, and uh, a number of smaller uh, uh, murmur ser a mumble server, a web server, uh, and a large number of other projects. It is by default integrated into uh, uh, some of the larger um, distributions, so it's probably easy to get. Of course, you can go to the website, and it virtually runs on all operating systems people have tested it on, sometimes with a few modifications, but I normally get them back on mainly all standard architectures because it's written to be really, really portable. Um, and if you have systems that are not on this list, if you're using it, please let me know because uh, I, I always uh, want to add them if possible. And the uh, philosophy behind Polar SSL is that it is to be easy. It's the only easy SSL and cryptography library available as far as I know. Um, it is very loosely coupled, meaning it's very drag and drop if you want to integrate it with your own, pro uh, with your own products. And it's very easy to uh, separate it. It's documented, it's tested, and it's portable. So on the easy side, it has an easy to understand API. It, all the function names are normally readable. There are no uh, short, shorthands for, uh, for code. It doesn't use macros unless it's really, really necessary to make clean code. Um, but it doesn't have layers on layers on layers of macros. I don't think there's any two uh, macro in a macro in the, in the entire code, save for the expansion of um, uh, a, a translation table for AES, which is easier to do with a double macro, but that's not normal code that a, that a user would probably look at and uh, um, has to read. So in normal code, there's no macros if, uh, if needed. Um, and it has a number of examples that should make it easy for people to actually integrate it into existing projects. Um, I add as much as possible whenever needed, so if anybody needs help, just let me know. And there's a lot of people that try to help people integrate uh, photos, so it is very loosely coupled, and that's something I'm really a fan of, um, and that means there's no global code. The only global file there is, is the config.h header file, which sets the defines on which parts are enabled for for build time, but if you want to make your own or want to integrate that into command line, that's your choice. There's no global code. And that has some disadvantages as well. We'll dive into that a bit later. But it does mean that if you want to integrate AES, you can just take AES.c, AES.h, and you're done. You don't need anything else from the library. And that goes for all the symmetric ciphers, for all the hashes that are available. And of course, uh, also for ASIN1 parsing for uh, base64. Um, but if you want to do some more complex stuff like RSA, which does require a number library, which we have internally, but uh, also requires AES, then yes, of course, you need all those in the package for the modules to, to actually uh, work. But you can just grab all the H and C files and you're done. Um, it uses a lot of function pointers and hooks uh, where required, as far as we know, to make it easy to adapt the flow and or add new modules to the system without having to actually change any code. So um, uh, the IP stack you can switch out and in. It standardly, it uses the BSD, uh, the BSD Linux Unix stack. Uh, but if you want to use LWIP or uh, micro IP, um, it's very easy to just change one module or two function pointers and you have a new, uh, you have a working polar zone on top of that network layer. You can change the flow of verifications where you can actually hook into uh, certificate verification and have you implement your own blacklist system 
on top of what's already available within uh, X509. You can add random entropy sources if you don't trust your own dev random uh, enough and you want to add some extra sources to, uh, to, to, to loosen it up. Um, well, there's much more. It's documented for an open source project. I have to be, I'm proud of the fact that it's actually documented. It has source code documentation through the entire code. Uh, it's document uh, document document and it Duction doesn't complain about any variable or, uh, anywhere in the code. It has uh, a lot of extra documentation for evaluation purposes. Uh, I'll dive into that a bit later. It has uh, tutorial example codes, so it tries to make it as easy as possible to actually use. And it's tested. Um, it actually has an integrated test system. Uh, thanks to a uh, uh, unit test framework made by Ian Blumel, uh, which is a very, very simple uh, test framework, so just a single header file. Uh, but in combination with Pro, it makes for a fantastic testing framework that allows PolarCell to do over 1600 runtime or co after compile time tests for regressions, code coverage, and most important of all, actual validation of all the cryptographic code that it does what it's supposed to do. It's portable. It's written as much as possible in ANSI C, uh, C89 as much as possible because that actually, most compilers actually support that fully. Um, of course, you have Visual Studio, um, horrible. Um, but uh, uh, um, I'm trying to make uh, it as easy as possible to use on every compiler. Um, that doesn't mean that there are some issues because all the all the good stuff for portability, like um, um, standardized types, uh, only came with C99, and that's for some compilers still a problem. But I'm moving to C99, most likely to have Polar Cell better in typing over more over more systems, as most compilers, as far as I know, now support C99, except Visual Studio. There's no global code, so that does mean that all the portability code that's available, so code that's really specific for FreeBSD or Windows or your ARM environment, is module specific. So that does mean there's double code in the system. It does mean that there's a standard uh, a mini part of code for defining how SNPrintf works under Windows. And it's in all the files that use SNPrintf because they have to have portability code. But I try to adhere to 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 to, uh, uh, to dry principle as much as possible, but the loose coupling for Polar Cell is more important. So, if possible, I do dry. If not, then I'll do duplicate code, and I'll try to make sure that um, there's enough tests to make sure that if I change something, that it changes everywhere. So. Just for the people that don't have any experience with Polar Cell, how simple is it to make something that uh, uh, has network connection SSLized? Um, you include some headers, which is just basic stuff. You do a little bit of variable declaration, but that's not much. You do mainly, this is the most important part of making the SSL, saying if it's a client or a server, saying if it has to verify certificates, if it has to guarantee that a certificate passes the entire chain, um, which random number generator it has to use, which debug function it has to use so you can get your output, which network uh, input output function it has to use to send and receive. So there you can change your network stack when possible, which cipher suites for SSL are uh, accepted, what your own certificate is and what your CA chain is. And the last two aren't even needed if you just make a client that doesn't need to do any authentication. And aside from di this, changing the connect code, which is just changing the normal accept to a net connect, and doing these two changes in your service, namely changing the write to an SSL write and the read to an SSL read, you're done. You have a fully functional SSL client at the moment. It can be that simple, but uh, uh, um, it doesn't work that way always as if you are, have harder code or you have multi-threaded code, then you have to do a little bit more. Because Polar SSL is single-threaded and it expects to be running single-threaded, um, at least for all its 
uh, uh, for all its 